Welcome back, everybody. I'm Brian Holmes, president and lead pastor of Empowered Christian Ministries and author of Ready, Set, Go, a 30-day guide for new believers, faith foundations for the Christian life. This video is being made to help facilitate your one-on-one -on -one discipleship or small group discussion time. If you don't have the book yet, get a copy from your church or small group leader, or there's links to all the versions available at empoweredchristian.org forward slash ready, set, go. If you're with your group now, just save the link and order it later. If you have any newcomers to your group, pause the video now and do the short icebreaker that I gave on day 15. All right, let's jump into the lesson. This week we read day 24, early church history and teaching. This lesson covered the 23 books that come after the four gospels we looked at last week. The book of Acts, which was about the history of the development, spread, and challenges of the early church, the 13 letters written by the Apostle Paul to the early churches, and then the next nine letters written by other apostles and early church leaders to churches as well. At the end of this lesson, I gave a Bible reading checklist where we outlined all of these different books, and then I asked in your journal portion, what books seem interesting to you after studying all of these and to pick one or more to read today. And if you, since you've had the whole week, maybe you've read additional books. The first book covered was Acts, or as I listed there, the Acts of the Apostles. And some would call it the Acts of the Holy Spirit, rather. But nonetheless, this was written by the Apostle Luke to a Gentile believer named Theophilus. And his account is everything from right after the resurrection, before Jesus' ascension, uh, AD 30 to 33, um, all the way until the end of Paul's first Roman imprisonment in AD 62. And I gave a brief summary there of which chapters cover which portion. So I'd like to invite all of you who read the book of Acts this week to share any thoughts or insights that you have. What an exciting book the book of Acts was. Next, we looked at the Pauline epistles, and I listed these in the lesson exactly how they appear in your Bible, beginning with the book of Romans, which I described as a robust theological masterpiece, really packing a ton of theology and doctrine into this important book. Did anyone in your group focus on reading this book and spend some time in it? Let's invite them to share their thoughts now. Next, we learned about 1 Corinthians, which was the letter Paul wrote to the church in Corinth and all the different things that they covered. And then it followed up a few years later with 2 Corinthians. Let's invite conversation about anybody who read these books in detail and wants to share their thoughts on it. Now, don't forget, we have to go through all the rest of the letters as well. So be sure to just share any thoughts if this was your main focus that you'd like to discuss tonight. Otherwise, let's wait until we have an opportunity to get to what you got to. The next three books, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians, were all written between that 60 AD to 62 period during Paul's first Roman imprisonment. We may call these the prison epistles. Does anyone have some thoughts they want to share about that? Let's pause and let them discuss those things. The next two letters, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, were actually really early on, AD 51 and 52. These were really early on at the beginning of Paul's ministry and missionary journeys. And then these are followed by 1st and 2nd Timothy, which were closer to the end of Paul's life and ministry as well as Timothy and Philemon, which were pretty close to the same time period. So let's uh, pause there and allow anyone who wants to share some thoughts on any of these letters. Next, we shifted our direction to the remaining nine letters in the New Testament, beginning with Hebrews, and the author was unknown, but I speculate a couple of people it could have been, what was interesting about this is how much it captures the essence of how the New Covenant 
through Jesus contrasts with the old covenant to the Jewish people and how Jesus is superior in every possible way. Did anyone read that this week? And if so, let's invite you to share your thoughts on that book. Next, there was the book of James, which is Jesus' half-brother. This is not James, the Apostle John's brother. Rather, this is Jesus' half-brother and Jude's brother, as I put in the lesson there. This is actually the earliest letter in the New Testament, uh, dated around A.D. 44 to 49. And there's really a lot of practical advice about how your life looks when you have real faith. That's followed by 1 Peter and 2 Peter which are really written from Rome during the time period when there's a lot of persecution, a lot of false teaching, and, and all kinds of stuff. So let's uh, pause here and let you guys uh, share any thoughts you have if you read James, 1st or 2nd Peter. Next, we covered 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John, and the book of Jude. One of the most important ones of these that's my favorite is 1st John. Such a powerful letter that really covers a lot of important topics dealing with Gnosticism, demons, uh, you know, identifying true Christians from false ones, and how we can know who are true by the fruit of our lives. Did any of you guys read these books this week? And if so, if you'd like to share some thoughts on that, open that up for conversation. Let's do that now. And last but not least is the book of Revelation. A lot of times people say revelations, but that's just a misnomer. There's only one revelation. It was the revelation of Christ to John. It was what he pulled the veil back and revealed to him, which is what that word means. And this is a very important book, but also a very cryptic one that is very difficult to understand. And there's a lot of layers to it. And there's a lot of different ways to interpret it. So uh, even though you should definitely read it and believe the things that are taught in it, also know that there are many different ways to interpret this. Few teachers are going to agree on every possible way of doing it. Note that we, in our modern churches, need to definitely learn from the lesson that is given to Jesus' words to each of the seven churches in the beginning. And then notice the main themes throughout the rest of the book, right? There will be a tribulation period. The church will be tested. God will judge the earth. There's going to be an antichrist and a false prophet and a a period of tribulation. Some believe that the church won't be here. Uh, Others believe that we will be here all the way until the very end. So we should be prepared to go through it and then pray that we we don't have to. But we know at the end that God gets the final victory. Jesus comes back with power and authority. All those who do evil are punished and thrown into the eternal lake of fire or hell. And there's a new heaven and a new earth. And we live with God, the Father, and Jesus in paradise forever. So this is the culmination of this entire story of humanity. And we see the whole thing in dramatic pictorial description. Did any of you uh, spend some time reading the book of Revelation? And if so, you wanted to share some thoughts. Try not to get too caught up on the details and uh, share some thoughts about what the big picture shows, right? The goal of the book of Revelation is not to have us point to what's the mark of the beast, who's the Antichrist going to be, which is this country, what's this thing or that thing. The big picture is God's going to judge all those who do evil, and we win in the end. So let's share some thoughts on that now. All right, so I pray that this survey of the rest of the New Testament was a blessing for each of you guys. I know it's going to take you some time to read all of these books, but definitely do it over the next year. I have an even checklist there if you have the the paperback version of the book. It's important that we read God's Word and soak it into our soul, that we 
think biblically. One of the things that is so powerful about just noticing the summary of each of these books, it captures this idea that a lot of the things we focus on in the church are not the things that are being focused on in the Bible. And if we were to ground ourselves into what they are paying attention to in the Bible, the things that the Holy Spirit felt were important to preserve and for us to know, and we just grounded our lives and we grounded the focus of our churches on these things, it would allow us to have a much more mature and disciplined lifestyle and a focus on what we should be doing with our missions, what we should be doing with our stewardship of our life and our resources and our time and our talent. So definitely capture the big picture by just noticing what the Bible's focusing on, especially the New Testament, which is all about our relationship with God through Christ. And then from there, we can zoom in and focus on specific topics as they're relevant or as the Spirit leads, um, or just get to each of them over time. But let us always remember to keep the main thing the main thing. Amen? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Many people are Christians for years and years and years, and they never get into the Bible. I hope that these little summaries uh, are intriguing enough and informative enough that you'll want to dive into each one of these to read it for yourself. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Shoot on over to empoweredchristian.org forward slash ready, set, go, and check out our e-course version where you can leave your testimonies, your comments, your thoughts, or ask me questions in our discussion areas on each lesson in the course. You can also shoot over to our YouTube channel and leave comments in the comment section underneath this discussion video. I'd love to hear your thoughts there as well, and it helps other people find the content. Today's lesson is the conclusion of this five-part series on doing a survey through the entire Bible. Next week, we begin the final six parts, which is about your new lifestyle in Christ. And we cover six different aspects of how to embrace the truly authentic Christian lifestyle. So I think you're going to be excited to start that journey. If you're only planning on doing the five-part series, I pray that this series has blessed you, and I hope that you will continue the, to read the rest of the lessons in your own time or find another group that is willing to do it with you or do it through one-on-one -on -one discipleship or join our e-course version and be a part of a community there or on YouTube in our community there. There's no excuse. Keep learning even if those around you are not wanting to and surround yourself with people who are always learning, always growing, always improving. We never quite get all the way there. So continue to grow and push yourself and challenge yourself, even if you need to do it on your own until you get some other people in your corner to do it with you. So I pray that this content has blessed you, has given you an appreciation of all the power and content that's in the Bible. Go ahead and read day 25 this week if you're continuing on, which is about intimacy with God through daily encounters. And we'll meet you next week and talk about it. God bless.